This is your host, Dorothy Shelton. Melon Thomas Benedict died of terminal brain cancer in 1982. While in hospice care, Melon died for at least an hour and a half before he returned to his body. He is one of the most studied near-deathers in the world. Deepak Chopra has called Melon the encyclopedia of the afterlife in his book, Life After Death. In this video, Melon journeys beyond the light at the end of the tunnel. He is shown during his NDE, in holographic detail, Earth's past and a beautiful vision of mankind's future for the next 400 years. He experienced the cosmology of our soul's connection to Mother Earth, Gaia, and was shown mankind's role in the universe. If you would like to watch part one of this video, where Melon journeys through several realms of consciousness, including hell consciousness. I will leave a link to that video at the end of this video and in the info box. The light at the end of the tunnel. Instantly, I was before an awesome light that was brighter than a million suns. It was like an all-encompassing, vast, sea of endless love light. It was the light at the end of the tunnel, and it penetrated to the essence of my soul. I felt illuminated, fully conscious, totally present in every moment of everything. I was lit up with love light. In absolute awe, I asked the light, Are you God? Then within the light I saw a figure smiling at me, and I immediately knew that it was the Christ. I mean, the real thing. The true vibration. Love. Compassion. Forgiveness. Everything you've ever heard about Christ or Christ consciousness. It blew me away. Even though I spent some years of my youth in a Catholic boarding school, I had always thought the Jesus story was just that. A story. And here was Christ himself before me gracing me on every level. Wow! As Christ was gracing me, the light transformed, and within it I saw the Buddha as a living lotus, the center unfolding endlessly, every petal blossoming a different Buddha, and all of them sacred. The grace was profoundly beautiful. Then the light transformed ever so wonderfully into Lord Krishna, with glistening iridescent blue skin of such grace and power. And the light transformed yet again, this time into the great Allah, grace beyond grace, the sun, the moon, the stars, and so very much more. I saw Muhammad in absolute devotion and total bliss at Allah's bejeweled feet. Man, oh man, I ran over and kissed the bejeweled feet of the great Allah, and then the feet of Muhammad, who laughed with grace at this wonderstruck child that I was. And as Muhammad laughed with me, I was in total bliss. The light continued to transform into an endless cascade of gods. Each and every one of them was for real and sacred. I felt their grace and power. I honored all of them, African, Egyptian, Greek, Hebrew, Christian, Islam, Native American, and so on and on. I was in the God stream of consciousness, where all gods are valid and very, very real. I was given knowledge at light speed. As fast as I could think a question, I was graced with answers from the transforming light of the gods. I thought of many things and was shown my desires. Am I in heaven? I asked. Yes, you always have been. The universe and everything is already in heaven. From before the beginning of time, the light answered. Who or what then is the most real or truest or greatest God of all? I asked. There was no response this time. I asked again, and a third time before my question was answered. 
It came as a realization, opening as a wellspring in the deepest part of my soul, accompanied by a multitude of angelic voices. It also sounded a little bit like that hiss I'd heard before. The voices whispered, Who and what is not God? I realized how true this was. If I tried to name what is God, I would have to name everything in the universe and more. So I saw that the entire universe is the body of God. There is nothing real or imagined that is not God's stuff. All at once it dawned on me that if everything is God, then I must also be God. At that second, I experienced the I am, that which is in all. I realized that I was interacting with a matrix of unimaginable energy, the superconscious or higher self realm. This energy realm is a very real place, a dimension of the most magnificent, subtle energy of life. It was like being in the purest and most complete non-judgment and acceptance I have ever known. It transformed me. To be accepted and loved totally in that way. The instant the light embraces, one will never, ever be the same again. I had so many questions and all of them were being answered completely. I saw that the tunnel of light was like a navel cord, the silver cord connecting each and every soul to the source of life, to God, and that everything one experiences while going to the light is their own feedback loop or stream of consciousness made up of the thoughts, beliefs, prejudices, all of their life issues. That's why a Christian will most likely have a Christian-oriented experience. And a Buddhist, a Muslim, a Catholic, a Native American, and an African will each have their own personal experience, and the journey will be custom-tailored by each individual's personal belief system. I saw that everyone, no matter what religious or philosophical group they may belong to, has a slightly different angle or way of interpreting God, the universe, good and evil, love and fear, even the colors of the rainbow. And that's what's so wonderful about human beings. We each look at life in our own individual and unique way. Our different views and opinions make this world a richer place to be in. Our lives would become very dull indeed if we all thought about things in exactly the same way. I was also shown that more often than we know, our rigid beliefs, prejudices, and fear of survival can limit our fuller understanding of the true meaning of life. Life is about more, much more than we can imagine at this time. I knew this was the truth, and I wanted to explore as much of the universe as possible. Since we are all God, I asked, then why are humans so evil? Why are we destroying our planet and each other? This was a big one for me, because my worldview killed me. I died in fear of nuclear war, toxic waste, violence, pollution, and overpopulation. Suddenly the light transformed, and I was able to see to the full extent of my soul. It gleamed and swirled into a kaleidoscope, or a mandala, of human souls. It was the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. At that moment, the light responded sweetly, Oh, beautiful human! and I was gently pulled inside this light matrix of all the human souls that had ever lived. I became aware that I was in the core essence of my own soul, which was an integral part of an ancient, exquisite, and very highly developed group of souls we call humanity. I saw that all humans are the same human. Each and every one of us is a unique and important facet of something much, much larger. I was astounded to see, feel, and know in every way possible that there was no evil whatsoever in the human soul. Can you imagine that? There never was and never will be. I got to see into every human soul on the planet, including my own. 
I saw that we are all soulmates in the most intimate way, from our atoms to our biology to our cosmology. Every negative notion I ever had about human beings exploded in that moment. I sighed, oh, beautiful human, and fell in love with humanity. There is a name for this special place within the mandala of human souls. It is called the Heartland. Just as there are lower realms of darkness, the Heartland is that matrix of all human consciousness in its highest aspects, most loving thoughts, the wisdom of the ages, our highest energy and love light. Anyone who could see what I have seen would fall in love with humanity forever. This realm of human wisdom and love is very real stuff. It's at the next subtle energy level, or the soul level. I saw that science would eventually prove without a doubt that the soul does in fact exist. In this group soul matrix, I watch the stream of consciousness of the ages Humans are the sum total of all that has come before us in this living system we call life on Earth. I watched as the history of Earth's evolution played out in film strips made of our DNA ribbons. It was like watching the dance of life. All the ancient ribbons dancing together, weaving, unweaving, and reweaving endless creations which formed a tapestry made up of all the life on Earth. In humbled awe, I witnessed the birth of the first humans. We are the youngest child of a greater, more ancient, and more intelligent being, the Gaia. I saw that the Earth is a living, super-intelligent, spiritual being. Humans are a part of this whole living system. Ancient man realized this and thought of himself as a child of nature the wonder child of the gods. He knew that the earth was his mother. Modern man is now remembering this, and his place in the scheme of things seems like a revelation to him. This is what I saw, that whatever you may call God, that which is without beginning or an end, created the present universe and all the other universes, which in the timeless elegance of the music of the spheres created all the worlds, including our solar system, that the sun and all the planets in our solar system are a cosmic life force that formed the earth out of itself and gave her life, and the earth as a mother gives her life to us. All of this is God's play. We are truly the children of the earth, who is a child of the universe, who itself is a child of God. As modern man developed his intellect in the areas of philosophy, mathematics, and science, he separated himself, for a time, from the rest of the natural system that had created him. We've been like children at an early age who haven't yet made the connection that our parents had something to do with our creation. As for humanity being evil, I was shown that, compared to the rest of the natural world, the human system is graceful and kind. I observed what one night in the jungle would be like, all the wild animals, bugs, and plants feeding and preying on each other, a place where everything is food. There are no laws against murder or rape. There is no concern about life and death as we know it. Is it evil when a lion hunts down a baby gazelle while its mother stands by helplessly watching? I was given an example seen through the life of an insect. Ants locusts, and the mighty termite have made more wars and created much more destruction in their realm over the eons than humans have in ours. We are part of a greater living and self-correcting being. The earth itself has made more species, plant, insect, and animal extinct than mankind ever will. The earth has created and recycled more toxic pollution than man has or will make before developing non-polluting technologies. Just think of all the toxic material volcanoes have spewed forth since the beginning of the earth. 
and then there are the forest fires, etc. Yellowstone National Park is one of nature's toxic waste dumps, but we think it's beautiful, don't we? Humans have evolved up the entire evolutionary chain of life, from the single cell amoeba all the way up through the plant and animal kingdoms. We are just now evolving out of the animal cycle, homo sapien or wise ape, into the next level of our growth as enlightened beings. You kill a human and it's a big deal to us. What with the emotional pain, the paperwork, the funeral arrangements, and the property settlements. We have an evolved sense of these things. Humans hunt and prey on each other much less than the rest of this living system. The time of humans hunting and preying on each other is coming to an end as we evolve out of the survival mode of existence. Show me more about the wars of mankind, I asked. In a fantastic time-lapse movie, I watched all the human wars from the beginning of time on Earth. Wars small and large, feeble and great. Wars that never made it into the history books of man, but are recorded as everything is in our book of life, the DNA ribbon. This book of life is in every cell of our present body, as well as the higher self group soul matrix. I saw wars between nations and small tribes, and even little fights among children. I watched great civilizations conquering and being conquered, broken up, reassimilated, and redefined. History changed every time this happened sometimes massively, sometimes minutely. I could see the entire Earth all at the same time. It was a tremendous holographic movie. To me, it looked as if the Earth was still in its egg stage, a developing cosmic egg. All of the individual parts totally self-centered, busy developing themselves. But all of these parts, each one equally important to the whole, we're forming a greater living thing. We humans have had a narrow understanding about the true nature of life forms. We have tended to compare everything to our form and intelligence. I saw that we humans are like the brain cells of this system, the part that knows that it is, the part that can name all the other parts. We have a reflective consciousness we are that part of the earth which can look out at the stars in the heavens, invent ways to study the stars, and discover that we are made from stardust. And in fact, everything is made from stardust. I saw that we are an intrinsic part of what we call the ecology, or nature. Human beings are the youngest creation in this life system. Very few new species have evolved since the human. In fact, humans create more new species now than nature does. This is because Gaia, the Earth, is forming a global brain, and the cells of this brain are human beings. All of the other systems are developed and prepared for us. The rivers and streams are like circulatory systems. The forests are like the lungs, the ocean like the liver, and so on. Continents, mountain ranges, valleys, deserts, and jungles are all alive, growing and transforming themselves into a greater life form. The biological world is constantly transforming and expanding its consciousness, or life experience. Inorganic life is also transforming, but not nearly as quickly as the organic, biological world. It was incredible to watch evolution on this mammoth scale. It became clear to me that the human world evolved quite naturally out of inorganic life into organic life or biological life systems. It was an elegant sight to see the first humans arise out of Gaia, who itself arose out of stardust, which in turn arose out of the center of God. I heard the first human thoughts as they were forming in the newly born mind. It was a spectacular evolution, an immense and ancient stream of consciousness awakening in this newborn babe, humanity. Since the creation of a human being, evolution on this planet has speeded up tremendously. 
The human world is now transforming faster than any other system. It was glorious to watch the evolution of Gaia, of all of us, as a cosmic and sacred being. Like seeing life forming inside of an egg. It was a fantastic spiritual awakening for me. From the Big Bang to this present moment has been like a single breath to God. I saw that creation itself has just begun, and that life in this universe is just getting started, especially for us. Technically, we have not yet been born. This new creation will be born when the entire system, including humans, is ready. Just as all the parts of a baby come together before its birth, a mother's womb is a very small universe. But when a baby is born, it becomes aware of and joins in a world of human beings. When we are born in consciousness as a planetary being, when all the living systems link up and interface as a whole conscious cosmic life form, then we will truly experience the entire solar system as our local. Celestial body. I call this living organism, our entire solar system, the Sun Gaia system. I was graced to see the beautiful and elegant relationships of all of the planets and moons, asteroid belt, orbits of the planets, their mass, gravities, attractions, and energies. Think of the planet Earth as an egg, and the solar system as our greater body. Which we are growing into. Now that's quite an interesting life form. So the global brain or being is forming, and then there is the solar being, and right on up to the galaxy or the galactic brain, and so on and on, as we grow into our universal being, or consciousness. As I witnessed the beauty of Gaia's evolutionary process, I was surprised to see. That we actually need more people on the planet. Like brain cells growing, we haven't yet achieved the optimum density to be born, but we are very close. It takes all of us to make this next shift into the global being. No one is more or less important than the other in this great enterprise. We are the wonder child of the universe, and we are about to be born. Because humanity is in its embryo stage, we often cannot see the forest for the trees. Our infantile intelligence has been so self-centered that it has separated us from the rest of the world and universe, as well as each other. This is the way it's supposed to be until about this time in evolution. We've all been very busy developing ourselves and getting ready to be born. Modern man is now discovering that the intellect alone can only begin to comprehend the fullness of the universe. There are more stars in the night sky than there ever will be philosophies, religions, or sciences. As far as I could tell from the other side, the universe was not created as an intellectual exercise. Feel free to intellectualize it, but the universe will never be limited by intellectual estimations. The universe is only partially intellectual; it is by far a more sensual and totally sentient place. If one tries to understand the universe, or even an individual life solely from the mental point of view, one will always fall short of the fuller, more whole state of being. What is the state of being? We came from a wise God, a wise universe, and a wise solar system. Humans are wise beings. Everything we do is wise. God designed us for success. It's in every atom of our being. We are the sum total of all that has come and gone before us on this planet and the universe. Think of it. Billions of years and unimaginable energy has already gone into our creation, even our very cells and DNA. Our consciousness evolved from the mind of God, and was distilled by the Sangaya system of life into our very essence. We are a very young creation, and yet the seeds of ancient stars. 
Soon we will realize this truth and the way it applies to each individual life, as well as to all of humanity's future. Just as children grow into wiser adults, humanity is designed to blossom into a new creation, the global human. This global human is very independent, resourceful, and yet highly synergistic with the global net or web, as in the web of life. Humanity is now awakening into a new consciousness about its place or role in the universe. A brilliant, golden age was revealed to me. We have never in this world seen the likes of it. Global charity sprang up as massive amounts of money, food, and love were bestowed upon the needy of the world as never before in history. Although much of this charity has been inefficient, it still indicates that our love for each other is growing by leaps and bounds. We will learn to be much more efficient at giving and sharing as time goes on. That we have even created these graceful infrastructures is wonderful, and what they evolve into is even more incredible. I saw that there is a wisdom and an intricate sense of timing to everything that we do. When we split the atom, we split open our cosmic egg. We split ourselves from the past and expanded our consciousness into new paradigms. In the near future, survival games will come to an end. I witnessed the natural wars of growth and expansion, continent against continent, mountain against mountain, and then the biological wars of growth and expansion. From the first single cell organism to the human being, this was awesome. It looked like cellular division and growth, but on a planetary scale. The entire planet rippled with life. From the Stone Age to the present, human beings have been making war, and for some very good reasons. One of the most important is a very natural thing called hybrid vigor. Hybrid vigor is a scientific term, which describes a combining of multiple aspects in order to improve and or increase the integrity of the whole. All the wars of humanity have been an important part of this planetary hybrid vigor. No single race, religion, philosophy, or kingdom has or will rule this world for very long. That's because Gaia and the universe is an unlimited creation. Imagine what this world would be like if the pharaohs of ancient Egypt still ruled. There wouldn't have been much chance for the rest of us worker bees to evolve. Humans are presently the focal point of evolution on this planet. Any kingdom or system that suppresses the human Gaia spirit will attract enemies or disintegrators to break it up. Egypt, Greece, Rome, you know, Julius Caesar, Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan, Adolf Hitler, are just a few examples. Wars have served many purposes in the Gaia life system. Some of the main things I saw were cultural integration and race mixing. Yes, race mixing seems to be very important to Gaia. This increases the genetic hybrid vigor of all humans. One of the byproducts of all human wars has been cultural and race mixing. In modern times, this happened to a large extent during World War I, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Please forgive me for upsetting anyone, but as I saw it on the other side, any race of people which considers itself a pure race and will not mix with other cultures will eventually attract enemies to dissolve and recycle it. Pure genetics is unnatural when we are technically the same being. It would be like the foot saying, I don't want to be part of this system anymore. That would create severe stress on the rest of the body, wouldn't it? The Nazi movement of World War II represented a cancer in the human psyche that would have seriously restricted the rest of the world had they ruled it. So, all of the armies of the world joined forces like the T-cells of the immune system 
to attack the cancer and wipe it out. This was a healing of the system. Every life form on the planet has done it many times over. The universe is self-correcting, and so is all life on Earth. Each human being is the universe in microcosm. Therefore, each human being is also self-correcting.